if you had an opportunity right now to walk into a situation with our current leadership as a country, right? We're getting political <laughs> with, here. with your skills. <laughs> okay. And, and I think, yeah, I mean, obviously it's, it's a matter of politics, right. so it, it gets political, but what advice would you give the staff, right? And I mean the collective staff in terms of the messaging that's coming out of our, our, our collective leadership. And I mean that on both sides of the aisle. Yeah. And I mean that at both the city, state, I was gonna ask and you. federal level. Because the way I see it, and this is my professional expert opinion, the whole thing is fucked. Right. I mean, it's this is the worst example. I I, I don't think you could have presented a worse example than what we're seeing in terms of pe people not being able to come together and provide a very clear, consistent, um, empathetic, and organized message that gets people to rally together to 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 solve problems. Right. Right. And we have a lot of fucking problems, more problems than we probably ever had uh, that people don't want to admit to that we've got. And it's it, every level it's permeated every single level of what I've, what I've just mentioned and every level of society. So if you had, if you could go to the top, right. Of these different places and just say, Hey dude, like, or guys, if you could just do this, this would be a great start to challenging the status quo at bringing people together so that we can come together instead of trying to divide. Yeah. Tough question. Um, I think the message that I would give is different for each level. <clears throat> so I think if you start at like a local city mm -hmm. uh, level, it's not the same message that I would give the president. Great the answer. Pres so the president cannot be necessarily, it's an institution. I don't think people really realize this. Since you asked me, I'll share a little bit. The, the presidency is not a human. If I want to be honest, it's a office. The president of the United States is a office. It's a constitutional office. It's not Joe Biden. It's not Donald Trump. It's not George W. Bush. They are humans that occupy that office, but there is a sort certain level of, I guess, candor, mannerisms, um, respect, um, and communication style that that office should have. <clears throat> because the president speaks and that determines safety, security for our country. Uh, it can annihilate relationships and allies overnight like that. So I think there's a lot of uh, water you have to tread very carefully. So I would give advice differently to that versus like our local mayor, Sam Licardo. Right. So I would give Licardo, who he actually have seen him a bunch of the gyms. Um, I would give him a different statement. I would say, be honest. <clears throat> in the sense of just be transparent. Yeah. I would say, you know, share your true feelings in the sense of, hey, you're concerned too, it's scary. We don't know what's going on. Um, I'm doing the best we can. We have a problem with homelessness or we have a problem with our small businesses collapsing or whatever you wanna talk about. I would say, look, it's bothersome to me. I would just be very open and honest, not speaking from like a teleprompter type of a thing. And I would go into like, Hey, and, and I would probably convince his communications team to write things that are more authentic and less scripted and more from his voice. Um, I don't know if they're doing that. I don't, I don't know him personally, so I can't speak to that. I would definitely encourage him to do that. I think at a state level, I think we need a clean house <laughs> to be very honest. I think, um, our state representatives and our national representatives to our state, our senators and our uh, republic and our uh, the House representatives, uh, I think that that needs to be. I think I mean I appreciate and respect our forefathers that established the, the the institution that we have. I think it's been taken advantage of. I think that a lot of Americans don't actually realize. I worked in Capitol Hill. I worked for a, a congressman. It's a completely entitled system and uh, of. Uh, they have health care that we're never going to have as citizens. Like they have an amazing health care. They have pensions after serving only a couple of years. There's stuff that like doesn't, that people don't really realize that I think. So what I would tell them is that drop all your fucking egos. I would probably, I think the people that need to, we need new blood in there. I think we actually need new, we've lost patriotism for self-interest. And I think that there's a balance, right? This country was founded on high treason. We really want to go there. 
on the 4th of July, I toast to high treason right. because people don't really, and people look at me weird and I'm like, no, like our forefathers, you know, you know this, yeah. left a tyrant, a king to come here, risk their lives mm -hmm. that I don't think people would do nowadays and start a country for the betterment of their own. And then people. fought for it. And then fought the hell and for and it. And laid yeah. their lives down for right. it. Right. And so I think that, and that like even gives me goosebumps to think about, like, because it's like, we don't have that. Now, entrepreneurship has always been in our country and starting your own and you know, we don't have socialism, medicine. We don't have any of that stuff because it's like built on you doing it for yourself. But there is a limit to then self-interest and then earning it yourself. And I think we're turning into like self-interest of, hey, you're not supporting my bill. I'm going to screw you. And it's just, uh, it's very, there's no gray area anymore. The world is turning into black and white. Mm -hmm. And in reality, the world's not black and white. But in it's our, nuanced, right? right, in our politics, they have become very black and white. And so I would encourage... Or tell, I guess, those leaders to drop the fucking egos, give up on your little, I got to get this through. Personal for, agendas. Personal agendas and come together and you actually might find that they'd accomplish a hell of a lot more. And then to the president, whoever that is, Joe Biden, whoever, if I'm giving advice to the specific president currently sitting in office, I would tell his people to, I would, first of all, I'd fire his communications team. Secondly, I would <laughs> um, get him a speech coach. Because, and I'm not trying to bash him. I think that, I think actually one-on-one -on -one without a prompter, he's actually a hell of a lot better. I think he comes off as more authentic and real. And I know that like when I worked for the vice president, he suffered from this too. He was very scripted, like, and Hagee, or excuse me, uh, Cheney was like a very funny guy, had a kind of a dry sense of humor, was very funny, but on camera, he was a statesman supporting the president, had no opinions, support. And um, I think that, that's kind of what we're dealing with now. It's this very, he's reading from a screen. He doesn't prepare for it. I would definitely encourage him to prepare. So I think there's a little bit of a different thing. I, I would definitely tell him to still be himself, but he can't say certain things that he's saying just because it then replicates through the media. It makes us look weaker. Just like, I mean, Trump even had those same things. Yeah. I, I mean, it's no difference between the two. It's no yeah. different. I mean, it's a matter of, I guess, putting aside your personal agendas and speaking as the leader of the free world. world. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that people lost touch of that, who that, who that person yeah. is and who that person. And is we don't, to be I mean, with. and I'm not some like crazy person, but like the days of Ronald Reagan and the days of like, even Herbert Walker Bush 41, like those people like came together. I mean, Democrat Republicans still, they hang out afterwards. Like these people don't. They would just as soon kill one another. Yeah. And I think that that's a little bit, that's problematic for not just them, but for our country. Oh, it's 1000% problematic for all of us. Yeah, I mean, and, and, and to be honest, people don't really realize politics is a business. I hate to say that maybe it wasn't built that way, but it is now. And so I think that we've even lost touch of that. Like it used to be a business. Now it's like some like personal, like, like crazy, like cult. Yeah, and when for people each go, organization, when people go to the polls, it's like they're voting voting for their new corporate boss, right, you know, to run the corporation. Yeah, and I think it's like even extremism, like they're like believing, you know, every word and every nuance. And I'm like, like time out. Yeah, I'm like it's a little scary. So I probably do that. I mean, I hope that answered the. No, I think it, I think you did a great job there, man. It was a, it was a very loaded. It's a tough, yeah, very very large question. Um, but again, you were kind of right there on the front lines and saw how certain. Certain actors, you know, in yeah, our in our history, lost touch. I guess the big thing is I think people have lost touch of history and the institutions they hold. I should say that I think that as President Forty Three said to us in a staff meeting one day, he said, "The day that you don't get goosebumps walking in the West Wing is the day you need to leave." And he says that's including me. He wore a blazer, and I'm not trying to promote George W. Bush, but he wore a blazer. Every day he walked in that, even on weekends, because he said he respected the people that held the office before him. Mm. And I think that that's what's been lost. I think when you don't realize that you're walking in history and what that responsibility is, I think is the day that you need to go.